Okay guys, welcome to module one. In this module, our expert will introduce us to the business acquisition concept and give us a good layout of the land. So get ready to take some notes and let's jump right in. So buying a business sounds like an incredible proposition. It sounds maybe like something that's out of reach to your average person. However, you'll find during this course that it's actually a much more realistic idea than you may have previously thought. There's a whole lot of reasons why doing so, buying a business, is actually more attractive to entrepreneurs than starting one from scratch. So let's go over some of the reasons that you might want to buy a business instead of start a new one. So the first thing that comes to mind is you get revenue stream faster. Okay, you literally become the owner of something that already is producing cash flow, bringing in money. You don't have to work up and slave to the point where you finally have positive cash flow coming in. So that's definitely a benefit. You could theoretically become the owner of a six-figure income stream, you know, within a matter of a week if you pay for it. So that's one potential advantage. Uh, buying a company is also potentially less risky because the business has already been proven to generate paying customers. Now, that all assumes that the data that you see before you purchase is 100% open and accurate and nothing was withheld. So there obviously are a lot of risks with buying a business as well. But when you get down to those main numbers about market and audience and supply and demand and all that good stuff, there's a lot less risk involved. There's a lot less guessing and gambling involved uh, compared to what you would be doing if you were starting a business from scratch and you didn't have that data. It's already historical. It's already proven when you purchase the business. There's less stress and work involved because the business is already up and running. It's already set up. So you don't need to create a launch strategy. You don't need to execute your launch campaigns, right? It's already beyond the startup stage. Another benefit is hiring and recruiting. You really don't have to do them. You don't really have to do a whole lot other than perhaps bringing in a new manager to handle things for you, which we'll get to later. In most cases, the business will retain its employees. You get those as a package deal, okay? So you're, you're already getting people who know how the business operates. They know what they need to do to fulfill their job roles and keep it up and running. So you don't have to worry about the headache of hiring and vetting and recruiting and all that good stuff. Then there's systems. Systems are, are the lifeblood of a good and profitable business. And usually you have to create those through a lot of trial and error. Systems like sourcing from suppliers and shipping and fulfillment and logistics and return policies and all these types of workflows and if this, then that. All that stuff that you and your employees have to develop and come up with and sort of hone over time, well, that's already established. You don't have to worry about that. And finally, buying a business, in many cases, is cheaper than building one. That sounds a little bit goofy, right? Because you see the giant price tag when you're buying a business. But if you're buying a business at the recommended level, which is, we'll get to that in more detail later, but it's basically three times the net annual profit, you're getting a really, really good deal. For all the reasons above, you're, you're getting a great deal as far as time and effort. But you're also getting a great deal in terms of money because that business will be profitable within a very short amount of time to you, assuming you did your due diligence. And you're also getting all sorts of assets like the email list, the customer database, the code, if you're buying a software app, for example, the brand, and all this other stuff. It's already included. And again, because it already has cash flow, if you do the math right, when you're coming up with the deal, when you're negotiating and you make that purchase, the financing that you acquire, the financing that you get for purchasing the business, so the loan, in other words, and in most cases, there's other options out there and we'll discuss that later on, but that's canceled out by the cash flow already. So theoretically, it really doesn't cost you anything at all if you're smart about it and you get a really good deal. It's actually very similar to investing in homes 
for the purpose of renting them out, right? You might get a mortgage for a home. Let's say you do zero down and you get a mortgage for $100,000 to buy a $100,000 home. Now that sounds really expensive. Let's say your monthly cost for that home, both the mortgage and the utilities and the maintenance, let's say it comes up to about $1,300 per month. Well, you have a tenant paying you rent at $1,500 per month. So you've got $200 of cash flow. And more importantly, though, all those costs associated with it, including the mortgage, the $100,000 mortgage, well, that's all canceled out. It's all paid for by your tenant. So you're not actually paying anything. That's the perfect ideal scenario where you don't have to worry about you know, other issues that, that get thrown into the mix. But generally speaking, the math works out that way. What sounds like a huge investment and a huge price tag, and it is, you know, these are real dollars. We don't want to belittle that. But what sounded like something massive is actually largely canceled out by the cash flow. That's, again, assuming that you acquired a good business and you got a good deal. So how do you make sure that that's the case? How do you make sure that you get a good business and that you get a really good deal? Well, the first thing you want to consider is to surround yourself with experts, trustworthy advisors. The first person that you probably want to reach out to would be an experienced attorney. Their job is to protect your interests and make sure that you're getting a legit deal. Their job is not the economics and the math of it. That's not their job to figure out the you know, cash flow and the income and the expenses and all that good stuff. That's your job and the job of other experts who you might enlist. But the attorney's job is specifically to ensure that the deal is totally legit and that you are protected. Other experts that you can bring on board include bankers, accountants, business brokers, people who specialize specifically in acquiring businesses and estimating their value and their payoff. So these guys can figure out what the expected income is going to be, whether or not the uh, claims that were made by the seller are accurate. They can figure out industry trends. They can figure out laws that might apply to the business. They can help you understand current market conditions and whether or not the deal is actually going to work out in your favor. Now, one of the most important things for you and that team of experts that you surround yourself with to do before you actually sign a deal is to dig deep into the business's history and finances. Right before you seriously consider actually making that purchase, you want to find out as much as you can beyond sort of the storefront stuff. You know, these businesses that are for sale will sometimes slap up a few figures, you know, regarding their cash flow, their income, their expenses, their traffic. You know, sometimes it might be a, a nice snapshot of the last three months, and it could be the case that they took some type of proactive action to make those three months as good as they are, but that regular operations outside of that snapshot aren't quite as uh, impressive, let's say. And, and that, that this, that's a very real possibility. So you want to get in there, you want to find copies of their certified financial records, you want to get their balance sheets, their cash flow statements, you know, you want to get their uh, employee files, including benefits, employee contracts, details on their employees, uh, accounts payable, accounts receivable, um, you know, any major uh, leases, any major contracts that they have, and also dig into their legal history for past lawsuits and, and issues like that. So you want to get your hands into all of that stuff or have the people who are you know, on your team helping you do that, get their hands into all that stuff and make sure everything is nice and clean. And be advised when you dig in, you might find you know, some, some blemishes. You might find that things aren't as rosy and that doesn't necessarily mean that you don't want the deal. In many cases, I mean, you got to understand, there's a reason people sell businesses. You know, it's not necessarily because everything's going perfect. Sometimes everything is going perfect and the person just doesn't feel like uh, running the business anymore. They just want to retire and go live on the beach, you know, with, with a, a good chunk of cash in their pocket. And that's fine. But in many cases, there's other aspects to the business that make them want to sell it. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. So don't get spooked if you see th that, that things are not as rosy when you finally dig in deep into the data. You just need to assess how big of a deal each thing is and whether or not 
it's something that you can improve upon. Because if you're buying a business, it's likely that you already had sort of a turnaround mentality, a fix and flip mentality. They might have a, a tremendous product, but it turns out, you know, sales are down because their marketing sucks and you're really good at marketing, you know? So it's not necessarily looking for these, these signs of something, you know, being less than perfect in the business and saying, at that point, you know what, never mind, we're not buying it. Expect to find things like that. What you really need to do is when you find those things, you need to calculate and determine whether or not those are things you're confident that you can improve upon. So what are some criteria for a good business acquisition? Well, the first one probably is cash flow. And specifically cash flow versus assets. Now, a lot of people go out there and they shop businesses because they want to acquire those assets. And assets are great. But you should prioritize cash flow. Remember, assets are things that by their very nature usually depreciate. Okay? Doesn't mean they're bad, but it means that your focus really should be on cash flow. Because cash flow does not depreciate in and of itself. Cash flow determines your ability to remain profitable and to pay off the financing that you used to purchase the business in the first place. That should be the first thing that you look at. Another thing to look at is a business that remains afloat in spite of bad management or in spite of some other negative aspect of it. So that means a business that continues to make money despite the fact that maybe the, the owner is not super business savvy or is not good at what they're doing. Maybe they have bad service. Maybe they have uh, you know, bad customer reviews. Ironically, in, in, in a certain scenario, might actually be a good thing when you're shopping around. Bad customer reviews on a business that's still doing well means that that's an area for improvement. And that worst case scenario, if your customer service was terrible, the business would still stay afloat. It's an indicator of how much demand there is for the thing that's being sold. Because if a business is still doing well, despite the fact that you know, it has negative reviews about bad customer support, if it's still doing well in spite of that, well, that's a good sign that the business, that the thing that's being sold, rather, is something that customers want. And that's, that's an incredibly important indicator. You can come in and solve the customer service problem. You can come in and solve the reputation problem, right? But what you know is that you have something that people want and they want it enough that they still buy despite that negative aspect of the business. That's a really good sign. Now you also want to find a business that can be managed and run with relatively low skills. Okay, you're looking for a business that is really simple. It sells something to a market that wants what it's selling. That's the meat and potatoes of the business that you're looking for. You don't want something that's super complex at least not for your first business acquisition. You don't want to buy something, you know, like an engineering company or a technology or science company, unless those are areas of your personal expertise, of course, uh, or a law firm or something along those lines that requires large amounts of investment in super highly technical skills or technical training for the employees or for the manager. You want to keep it nice and simple. And in a similar vein, you want to make sure it's something that can be easily run by someone other than you, right? Something nice and simple where you get a manager to manage it for you or a primary service provider to provide the service for you, right? So let's say you've got a restaurant. Well, you want to hire a good restaurant manager and a good chef. If you've got those two people, you'll be in good shape, right? You're looking for that type of a scenario, okay? You're buying a hair salon. Get yourself someone who's good at doing hair and put them in charge of the operation. If you can find a business where it's easy to do that, to just install a driver who's good at running the day-to-day -day operations, that would be ideal. So that's the type of business that you want to look for. Now, let's talk about the actual money and math question. Generally speaking, you want to look to acquire a business that is selling for three times its annual net profit, approximately. Now, during the negotiations, there's obviously the opportunity, and, and you should attempt to, bring them down further in price, the further below that critical marker of three times their net profit, uh, the better, because you've got more wiggle room there, you're able to uh, pay off your financing faster, you become profitable faster, 
more cash flow to work with and all that good stuff. But generally speaking, the starting point should be approximately three times their annual net profit. So let's say you're acquiring a business. Let's say it's a, a used car dealership. And let's say they've got $500,000 in annual revenue and half of that is profit. So $250,000 in profit. So the ideal price that you would want to pay for that business or that you wouldn't want to pay anything higher than would be $750,000. Okay, that would be the starting point. That's, that should be where the negotiations begin, somewhere around that, that point. If you do that, it'll be much more easy to maintain a good cash flow situation, much more easy to pay off the financing, the loans that you used to purchase to make that $750,000 purchase to pay back investors, make sure they get their money back if you got a circle of investors to help you with that purchase. Everything becomes much easier if you can stay at or below that three times their net profit purchase price. So those are just some general guidelines for what to look for when you're purchasing a business and to figure out if it's the right thing for you. In the next video, we're going to go over actually finding these businesses, as well as tracking down that team of experts, especially brokers and lawyers to help you in your first business acquisition.